and welcome back. Now we've been dealing a lot with um, LED displays and the like, whether it's LEDs like this or dot matrix, which is on a video that uh, I haven't actually published yet, but it's all about uh, the same Max 719. But I thought we'd do something different today, but still make use of the LED. We're going to look at this matrix keypad, which can be had for a little more than pennies. Um, it's got a self-adhesive rear here. So you can peel this off and stick it onto things, feed those through a hole in the cover and you've got yourself a pretty nifty security device or some kind of encoding mechanism that you need with an Arduino board. So let's look at um, what we can achieve. So this is, I've uploaded the program to this where we're going to end up eventually at the end of this uh, video or maybe the next one. So now when you press um, a digit on this keypad, you can see it shows up on the front. I think maybe I'd better kill the lights actually. So, right, lights duly dimmed. So if we press the digits on here, we can see that it scrolls for four digits and when you press the fifth button, it's, it scrolls to the left and loses any remaining ones. That's fine, and just to prove that uh, we can do it on that, if we press the, uh, the star or the hash key on here, we see that the H key comes up and if you press the other one, the L key comes up, so high and low, for example, who knows. And then if you press any other digit, it clears that high and low status and just carries on with the digits. So, um, how easy is it, first of all, to wire up one of these to an Arduino, or Arduino clone, or Nano? And what do we have to do then to do something useful with the output from here? Like sending it to an LED, but more than likely not, you'd probably be sending it down the wire to some other device. But it's always useful to have something to give confirmation and feedback to the user when they're pressing in key digits, even if that user happens to be yourself. So let's see how easy it is, first of all, to wire up just this matrix key display to, our, to an Arduino and get something sensible back. So here we have the uh, code window, and um, surprisingly today, perhaps, we're going to use a library written by somebody else, because I think um, we just want to get some stuff back at this point rather than reinventing the wheel. Whilst it's always useful to understand how it works, on this occasion I think we just want to make something work. So what this code does, we're going to define our keypad as having four rows and three columns and create a little matrix with those keys defined in here as you would see them on the keypad. Um, now the pins we're using on the Arduino the digital pins, we have to use unfortunately seven of them, even though we've got 12 keys, we only need seven lines, but that is still quite a chunk taken out of an Arduino Uno, and it's like. If you've got a Mega, of course, it doesn't matter, you've got loads and loads of digital inputs, but that's still quite a chunk, but uh, anyway, we'll persevere. We've got an LED pin, that's the standard LED pin on all Arduinos that we use for the Blink program. This is a call to the underlying library to map, basically, this matrix here so um, it understands which pin which um, pin combination creates which character so first of all we're going to say um, we're going to write to the pin uh, LED 13 set that up we're going to set the serial port up so we can read stuff back from the Arduino when it's running because that's where we're going to send our data so the loop which is simplicity itself we're going to go and get a key or at least try to we're going to say, well, if we got a key, let's see what we got. And this allows the star, the hash, and any other key that has been input. And it writes that back onto the serial port. So if we run this, let's uh, upload it first. So compiling, and see that's using nearly 4K, just that little tiny bit. So this is one of the reasons why you have to be aware of using libraries, by the way. Libraries are great because it means other people, much cleverer than me, can write these libraries for you and they've evolved over many months and years. But of course, they will contain many, many functions that perhaps you don't need and it bloats the size of the software. And as you can see here, that's using 4K, which is 12% of your program storage. Um, additionally, it's using 330 nights of the SRAM, which is perhaps even more desirable and valuable. So. If you can get away from not using a library every time, you'll benefit from the space, which could be important if you're scrabbling around for the last 1k of space or something. Right, let's um, see what happens now when we run this. Pressing 1, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Press the star. Nothing happens, of course, because it sets the LED pin um, on or off. I think the star sets it off and the hash sets it on, so you can't see that. But I'll demo that when we get back and the zero. There we are. I mean, that's all there is to it, really. So even now, you probably can see the possibilities of using this sort of construct, especially this one here, in, in doing something useful with this data that's coming back. Um, we'll have a little discussion on how this is working, actually. We're not going to delve into the actual library itself, although it's pretty small, so it's worth looking at. But um, we'll just see, in theory, how this all hangs together. OK, let's get back to the desk. So, back on my workbench here, um, we said we're going to talk about how this keypad works. Um, you've got seven lines here, and they're connected up onto here. When this is sitting here passive like this, none of these seven lines are connected to any other. They're all open circuit. As soon as you press one of these, something happens. Now this might be demonstrated a little bit easier with a printout. Here. So here you can see that we have four rows, which corresponds nicely to what actually is there, four rows and three columns. Three columns going down, so one, four, seven and star, for example. So that goes down here. And as you can see, there's a little tiny switch at the junction of each of these columns and rows. So what the Arduino does, or at least the library that we're using in this instance, it's whizzing around here very, very quickly indeed, thousands of times a second, probably. And it's connecting first of all to the column one, and then to column uh, to row zero. So column zero, row zero, and says, is there a connection? Can I detect any kind of short, if you like? No. Move on to the next one. Row one. No. Row two. No. Row three. Then moves on to column one and repeats this. And then column three and repeats that again. And as soon as it finds, oh, I've found something. Something's gone high, which means that was high. the key that must have been pressed to make that pin go high. Therefore, I'll do something with that. And what the library actually does, it puts it into an array and remembers it. So that's how it, it knows which key has been pressed. At any one instant, of course, no key's being pressed. But the minute you do, or the microsecond that you do, it will register that and put it into an array for us to deal with and returns the value as well, because it knows which key must have been pressed by the combination of columns and rows. It's a simple thing, and this is how your keypad works, your keyboard from your PC works. It's how this keypad works, and it's how... Well, all those sort of multi-key devices work, but we're not talking mobile phones here, they're all touch devices. But anything that actually has a physical movement, that's how it works. Right, enough of the theory. Um, how then do we get from simply just pressing these and get a number back on the serial port, as was shown, to actually producing something valid on this LED. Now, funnily enough, you can see this is getting a bit mad now. It's displaying all the digits and everything. That's because I've uploaded a program that doesn't deal with this at all. It's not, it's not talking to it down these wires. So this poor little Mac 7219 is trying to interpret, well, rubbish basically coming up and down these wires. See, it's gone off again. Which is what I warned about uh, a couple of videos ago, that when you upload a sketch to an Arduino, make sure you haven't really connected anything of value to it in case the inputs and outputs potentially could damage it. In this case, I think we're, we're fairly safe. But as you can see, it's all a bit random here. So let's upload a program that does a bit more and see where that gets us. Right, here we are just compiling and we're going to upload. And then I'm going to change the camera battery because it's flashing at me. Right, so that's uploaded. And I think if we press the keys now, yeah, we can see one, two, three, four. The star does the H, the hash key does the L. And if you press a digit again, it clears that as well. And moves forward. Okay, how do we do this? How do we basically combine what we've learned about the keypad to what we learned in previous videos on the Max 7219? That's coming up as soon as I've changed the battery on this camera. So, here we are back in the coding window. Um, now, let's just move that camera out of the way. Right, okay, here's the new code, although this is very much a, a mix of the simple code we just saw about uh, dealing with the the matrix keypad and some other code that we had previously seen, if you'd seen my previous videos, um, all about 
driving the Mac 719 LED, seven segment LED that is. So let's have a look about what this does. Uh, first of all we're defining the Mac 7119 three pins, the data in, the chip select and the clock. Uh, we're also defining the LED pin, the, the standard one on the board of the 13. Here we're just stuffing in the stuff we had last time for the keypad. This is the, the matrix that we're uh, holding in memory for the keys and allowing the keypad library to populate. The initialize, this routine here is actually down the bottom for some reason, let's have a look. So all this is doing is out, upping the, um, the pins to output status and driving them high. Remember that the chip select pin is always driven high normally and only bring it low when you want to talk to the 7219. And for the keypad matrix, well, we're, we're generating a low output on the LED so that it's off initially and starting the serial port so we can see if anything comes up on that, um, which the serial window you probably want to use for debugging. If you think something isn't happening you just stick a serial.print or serial.println for a line and just see what's going on. Okay that's fairly straightforward. Now all this here I'm going to whiz on past a little bit because we've seen all this or you will have seen it if you've been looking at my previous video videos on the Arduino LED driver system. We'll skip past this really quickly. Basically what this does is tell the 7219 to use all the digits available. Yes, we do want the help system switched on, which basically means we can just tell the 7219 go and put a number three on digit number four or number six on digit number one. Remember that the digits start from the rightmost. The rightmost digit is one, leftmost digit is eight. Uh, so that's what that does, just sort of initialize it. Well, and here in this middle, we're blanking them all out so that they don't display some random value. Then in our main loop, which does all the work, it's this bit here, what we're saying is go and get a key from the matrix, the keypad matrix. If we got a key, then what do we get? And if we got a star, we'll drive the LED high on the board and output on digit number eight, which is the leftmost, an H, and finish. And if we entered a hash, we'll drive the LED pin high, so it's on now rather than off, and we're going to put an L on the eighth most digit, which is the leftmost. And for any other key, the one or zero through nine, I should say, will output that into the buffer. Now I've made a little buffer, it's only a four character buffer. We'll put it into the, the rightmost character of the buffer and shift the, every other value in that buffer to the left by one. So it sort of scrolls the buffer to the left. That's what this bit here does. And then having now got the buffer set up with the three oldest digits to the left and the brand new digit you've just pressed to the right, it outputs it here. Um, this might be worth looking at actually. I mean, I don't, I don't really like fiddling about too much with four constructs, but this is a double loop because the buffer is going from zero to three, but the digits, because they start on the rightmost with one, are going in the reverse order. So one digit one displays buffer three, digit two displays buffer two. Digit 3 displays buffer 3 and, and digit 4 displays buffer 1. Or is that 0? I've lost track. That's why I've, I've written this. So you've got two loops here. So for two loops within 1, 4, one with the count going up, and what, well, starting low and the other one starting um, high, and then one incrementing and one decrementing. So the digit count is going up at the same time as the buffer count is coming down. It stops you having then to, to have separate counters for that. It does make it a little bit more complex, but once you understand that you can put more than one declaration here as part of a, a for loop, sometimes it can be quite useful, as indeed it is here. So that's all it is really. I mean, so we've got a buffer of four characters, zero through three, we've got four digits, one through four, uh, plus of course the eighth digit, which we're using just for a bit of playing around, and that's all there is to it. Uh, and I'll post this on the on the comments down below and you can inspect it. If you think I don't understand something in here, then Paul means put a little comment down there and we'll uh, explain it much more fully. So this is where I bought the uh, key matrix uh, membrane switch uh, from Banggood, although frankly you can get it from anywhere and it's not that expensive even if you do buy it in the UK or the US, but it most certainly is cheaper from the uh, Far East. Now this one comes from Hong Kong 
or China at least, somewhere like that, and uh, £1.04, which works out to be, let's just convert that into something else, uh, into dollars, and it says $1.49, which is uh, yeah, about right. And if you think that's funny, that this is so cheap for that, if I scroll down just a little tiny bit, you can buy 10 of them for $7.30. I mean 10, I mean you can put it into every project we ever make I guess and in pounds, let's just change that back that would be five pounds and eight pence a very precise amount, but ten of them so that's 50.8 pence for one of these it's just amazing so that's where I got it from, that's how much I paid um, I do believe I've bought others from elsewhere in fact, I might even have bought one from Amazon, or at least a, a marketplace supplier to Amazon, because it was quick delivery and I could play about with it. Mind you, that was months and months and months ago now. Okay, that's it. Let's go back to the main video. That was so whilst I was editing this video, I had a thought, because so I did mention, as part of the setup, you do need seven wires. Even though this has got 12 keys, you're still sacrificing seven digital I.O. ports just for this. And if you did want some user feedback in the terms of the LED display, even if it was only a four-way, you're still going to have to have another three uh, pins um, allocated to that. So that's quite a chunk to be taken out of your project. Now, if your project needs more digital I.O. pins than what uh, this will now allow you, I had an idea what you could do, certainly what I would do. If I like the idea of having this, either for some sort of menu arrangement, you know, menu 56 or whatever, or for some kind of entry, key entry thing, um, I'd think, well, how much is that worth to me in terms of project projectability, if you like? Because you can buy um, little tiny nanos like this, this one here, for about two pounds and the pros funny enough they're more expensive or at least they are on the site I'm currently looking at they're about three but so if we went for a nano like this one here for two pounds you could have this nano and this matrix and this as a sort of standalone project and until this bit sent some kind of signal back out the main project would refuse to respond as an example so because this only costs a pound, and if you buy them in blocks of 10, as we saw on the video, they're only about 50p. These are only two or three pounds each, and this one's two as well. So rather than try and scrabble around and force things into your main board and lose all those um, digital I.O. pens, you could do it very simply just by that. So that when this has been satisfied that, yes, I understand what it is you're, you're telling me, either an entry code or a menu item, this would then send out the correct response to, if you like, the main board. And then that would continue doing whatever it is your, your project does. Um, just a thought, as I had while I was editing. So, there we are. Okay. So if I just put my camera at the screen here, um, you can see that uh, from the Banggood site, um, a Nano V3 is £2.9, which is about $3. And uh, if you buy them in multiples, I think you'll get them even cheaper. So down here, for example, you've got a five pieces for £9.90, so that's, that's uh, just under £2 each, isn't it? So that is an option. And that really winds it up for today, really. A very simple piece of code to read in a, a matrix switch like this, which as we saw can be had for a pound or $1.50, was it? $1.40. Very, very cheap. And then how to get the values from this, rather than just displaying them on a serial window, I'm um, actually outputting them here on um, an LED very very easily because we're using the built-in capabilities of the 7219 to display real numbers without us having to faff about telling it how to make up for example a number five I mean normally you'd have to say well I want the top um, segment lit and all the left segment sit all, all these to make up a number five we don't have to do any of that when you just want simple digits and the letters H E L and P help which is all described in videos number 9 and number 10 and if you're interested in uh, the code going into a bit more depth and cleaning it all up that's in video number 11 all to do with this but that wraps it up for today thanks for watching see you in the next video i hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting remember you can leave comments down below and also click that little button that says subscribe okay thanks for watching and see you in the next video